Hello, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This is Brother Hosanna David. Welcome to the Narrowest Christ for All Nations. Today, we want to consider a topic. Submit to God, resist the devil. Submit to God, resist the devil. This topic is important. Yesterday, uh, pa the pa past week, Sunday, we talked about a world beyond God's control as a world actually grown out of God's control. That is what we looked at. And today, we want to kind of follow up. Uh, if you've not watched that message, please try to listen to that message because it's going to give you added advantage and understanding about today's message. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you. Your word comes out with fire and like a hammer and it breaks every rock into pieces. Spirit of a living God, we ask that you speak to us the way we understand. Submit to God resist the devil this is a topic lord how do we submit to you how do we resist what is the order of authority and dominion lord teach us and give us a heart of understanding may your word come out with power and let it break every yoke into pieces in the name of jesus in jesus christ's name we pray amen once again, you're welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's take the test for today. The test, James 4, 7 to 10. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. The, the battle of this world is so strong that a lot of people are failing. Why are they failing? A lot of people are failing because they have lost the true meaning. Some of them don't even know at the first place the true meaning of what dominion means. How the world started and how God actually dispensed authority in the first place. So before you can resist the devil, James is saying that first of all, we need to submit to God. We must first of all submit to God. Without submitting, submitting yourself to God, you cannot resist the devil. And this is what I actually want us to understand from today's message. Let us look at the very first time that God actually dispensed authority. He delegated delegated authority to men, Adam and Eve. Why is it that before we can resist the devil, we need to submit to God? Why is it that we are being told here that we must humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord so that he can lift us up? We must submit to the authority of God. And when we submit to God, he lifts us up. He places us in a position where we can resist the devil. Let us look at what happened in Acts of Apostles chapter 19, 14, 15, and 16 about the seven sons of Sceva. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priest, which do so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul I know, but who are, who are 
ye. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leap was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded one man driving seven men seven of them and the bible says that they are vagabond Jews vagabond these are people who did not actually have a relationship with God and what was their word of command we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached by the Jesus whom Paul preached they did not have a personal relationship with God what was the resultant effect the man that was possessed jumped on them and dealt with them and they fled naked they never submitted to the authority of god so they couldn't resist the devil and this is what happens a lot of times when people uh, i wonder the kind of generation we are living in right now we are being told in fact a lot of churches today have based the whole of their doctrine on prayer uh, I, I had a man on uh, uh, a man of god preaching and he was saying if you if you want to get married as a lady if the man can't speak in tongues run away if the man cannot speak in tongues run away don't stay this is horrible should people choose spouses by the ability of speaking in tongues or by the ability of bearing the fruit of the spirit this is horrible horrible teachings in the church speaking in tongues is is the evidence of holy ghost baptism but you can be filled with the holy spirit and not being able to speak in tongues this is the truth why is it that a lot of people have been carried away so many people have been carried away people have no relationship with god people are not yet born again and they are being taught how to pray 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 two hours three hours you want to catch the holy ghost where would the holy ghost be housed in a body that is filled with immorality in a body that is filled with all sorts of sins terrible the seven sons of skiva got it wrong you as a believer you as a christian you need to submit to the authority of god first without this submission you can't resist the devil the fact that you put on the uniform of a military man does not mean that you have the authority of a military man the fact that you dress like a doctor doesn't mean that you are a doctor for as many that are led by the spirit of god these are the sons of god if you are a child of god the spirit of god must dwell in you you must first of all be covenanted to the power of god before you can resist the devil why is it that a lot of people pray so much fire prayer and nothing works out for them it is because they have not submitted to the lordship of jesus christ this is a problem james said submit yourselves Therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you and you have to cleanse your hands you sin as a purify your heart you double minded look at the things stated here number 1 you have to submit to God before you can resist the devil and you must draw nigh to God you have to grow in the knowledge and in the grace of God 
and you cleanse your hands. Who can abide in the mountain of God? The one who can abide in the holy mountain of God must have clean hands. Without clean hands, you cannot abide. So when people are taught how to pray, how to pray, how to pray, so much prayers. But how many of those prayers are actually effective? Some people even say, oh, it is when I have prayed and cast demons and bite center that the witches come and press me. And that's true. <laughs> Why would they press you? You are disturbing them. Look at what Psalm 15, one following says. The Lord, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy he? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that babbeth not, not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is content. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. He must have clean hands. The one who abides in the temple of the Lord. The one that wields the authority of heaven. Must be the one that walk uprightly. The one who works righteousness. Today people are taught how to pray. It is not about praying. The Bible says that if Effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much of a righteous man. The prayers of sinners are abominable to God if they are not the prayers of repentance and reconciliation with God. What actually happened? Why do we need to submit to God? Let's look at Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image, and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fire of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female created them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fire of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. This is the delegation of authority upon the earth and this authority was given to men to have dominion you cannot have dominion without having a domain and the domain of men was this earth but what happened in genesis chapter 3 man fell and because he fell satan used this opportunity to Take advantage of men. The one you obey to that person, you are a servant. So by obeying Satan, by involving themselves in the work of darkness, they couldn't resist. You, they, when they submitted to the power of God, they were in charge. When they submitted to the power of sin, Satan took charge. We have to be careful as God's children. You can't just say, oh, I want to resist the devil. I want to cast the demons without first of all being a part of the kingdom that owns the name of Jesus Christ. You have to be a part of that kingdom. Without being a part of that kingdom, you can't cast out devils. Sorry, but this is the truth. Without being a part of the kingdom of God, you will not be recognized. 
your prayers will not be effective. Now, look at what Satan told Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 4, 8 and 9. Again, the devil taken him, taken him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. He showed him all these things and he said if you can just worship me i'm going to give you all these things why was he so bold because these things according to luke he said they have been handed over to him um Luke chapter 4 verse 6 okay let me try to put it on the screen we have to be careful as God's children meanwhile I just want to say very quickly that it is very very wrong for us as believers to begin to measure the spirituality of people and not just the spirituality of people to measure God's grace upon the lives of people by how much they have in their bank accounts. Because these same things that people use to measure spirituality are the very things that Satan actually used to tempt Jesus Christ. If Jesus had fallen, this is exactly what happens. Satan gives these things to people and people worship him. And when we see even the blind church, when they see people doing well, they say, oh, the power of God is moving in their lives. They are faithful and God is rewarding their faithfulness. Look at what Satan said. Luke 4, verses 6 and, 9, and 7. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. This is why a lot of people don't actually get it right. Satan said, When man fell in the garden of Eden, this was delivered unto him. And to whom if whomsoever I will, I give it. And if thou fall, and if thou, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. If you can worship me, I'm going to give you all these things. There are lots of people who have sold their souls, and because they still speak in tongues, because they speak in fed tongues, and uh, do fake miracles or demonically inspired miracles we say that God is with them that is why they are prospering imagine humans sent into this world to carry out assignment for God and they experience this kind of temptation and they've succeeded in bowing to the devil and receiving the glory receiving all the good things of the world and they still carry out the assignment they are given we applaud them and say, oh, he's a great man of God. <laughs> but remember that many of the things that are highly esteemed in the sight of men are never like that with God. The first, many who be first shall be last. And many who be last shall be first. Yes, I tell you the truth. Let us be wise. Let's come back home. Satan has some level of authority. Before Jesus Christ came, he had some level of authority. And it, it, it was so bold to tell Jesus that this has been added. If nothing had happened, Jesus would not have come to die. But from the moment man fell, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, the promise of Jesus Christ was given. That the seed of woman 
must come. The seed of the woman must come to crush the head of Satan. Now, if you look at the Bible, we will see some things in the Bible. Satan has his own kingdom. He is the head of that kingdom. God has his own kingdom. God is the head of his kingdom. There are just two kingdoms in the world. That is why you cannot say, oh, uh, I'm not for the devil. I'm neither for God. You belong to one. You are either here or there. You can serve two masters. Satan has a kingdom. And if you must oppose his kingdom, you have to belong to the kingdom of God. Let's look at some of the titles that Satan is called. He's called the God of this world. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. The prince of this world. John 14, 30. The prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2, 2. Lastly, the wicked one under whose power is the world. The whole world is under the power of the wicked one. 1 John 5, 19. This is the one you are to resist. So before you resist this one, you must first of all humble yourself. Confess your sins. You must first of all weep for your sins. You must submit yourself to God. You must draw nigh to God. You must cleanse your hands if you are still a sinner and purify your hearts if you have a double mind, if you don't have faith. You have to afflict your flesh and mourn and weep for your sins through repentance. Put on godly sorrow. Godly sorrow that leads to repentance. Without that, you can never, ever resist the devil. Satan is none of your mate. He is not your mate. The one who could meet Jesus face to face and quote scriptures and tempt him. We are talking about a prince. If Jesus called him the prince of this world, he said, the prince of this world cometh. Jesus himself called him a prince. So why do we think that we can live a rebellious life? The very things that God said we shouldn't do. Why do we think that we can do them? Live in every form of sexual immorality and gratify the desires of the flesh to the fullest. And come at the next minute and say, Say that I bind you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, you can't bind Satan. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You have to belong to God. You have to be in Christ first before you can do that. So when Jesus Christ came, he set up a kingdom. Remember what Daniel, the, the prophecy of Daniel, that in the days of the kings, the God of heaven and earth will set up a kingdom. And when the right time came, Jesus set up this kingdom. It is a kingdom of heaven that came down, which is the church. The kingdom of heaven came down with power on the day of Pentecost. So that kingdom is what has power over the power of Satan, over the kingdom of darkness. So if you don't belong to this kingdom, you can't resist the devil. You have to be a part of this kingdom. You have to be led by the Spirit of God. It is only on this condition that you can resist the devil. Without that, no way. You can't. Satan is stronger than you as a human being without Christ. 
you are nothing before him. So you have to be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And when you submit yourself to the authority of this kingdom, who is Christ, the head of this kingdom, Christ, and you obey him, then you are empowered. For as many as believed in him, he gave power. To them that believe in his name, he gave power to be children of God. You have to be empowered. To be a child of God is not just by confession. You have to be born again. You have to be given birth to by Christ, by God himself. You have to be born of the water and the spirit and of the word of God. And when you were born again, you can come out and resist anything. Praise God. <laughs> oh, a lot of people have been led astray. To believe that you, oh, pray, pray. It's not about prayer. Before you start praying and binding Satan, you have to submit yourself to God first. How many of you have submitted to God? You can't resist the devil without submitting to God. For Satan is bigger than you. Satan is one of the Sheru, the archangels, that excelled in might. When he sinned against God, when he was driven down to the earth, Satan retained his knowledge, but it is the corrupt version of his knowledge that he retained. Please be wise. Believers, be wise. Christians, be wise. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You have to be translated into the kingdom of God. You have to be a part of this kingdom. So even though you are in the world, you are no longer of the world. You can be of the world, you can be in the world and be of the world and you want to fight the power of the prince of the world. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to come out of the world. You have to come out of the evil. You have to come out of the darkness and not be a worker of iniquity. You have to come out of that kingdom and when you are translated into the kingdom of light, you can then continue you conti and you continue in the work of light. You become a child of God, born of God, and exercising the power of God because originally we are created to represent God in this world. That is why we were all created in, in the image and in the likeness of God. Because we are to exercise dominion on earth. Brethren, we have to understand these things. Let's look at what Jesus Christ actually said in John chapter 17, 14, 15, and, and 14, 11, chapter 17, verses 11, 14, and 15. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. I have given them thy word, and the world had hated them. Why? Because they don't belong to the world. Because they are not of this world. Listen. If you are of this world, you cannot fight the one that is the God of this world. For you to fight the God of this world, you must be translated into the kingdom of light. Into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. It is only on this condition that you can resist the devil. Let's continue with this passage. Because they are not of the, of the world, 
even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil one. This is it. Jesus is saying, I'm not praying that you should take them out, but these are mine. Even though the devil is the god of this world, these ones, they are the called out. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. The church is from the Greek word ecclesia. And ecclesia means the called out. When a town crier goes out and rings the bell and says, Oh, it's time for the meeting. It's time for the meeting. Everybody that is concerned, come out, come out. Those who are called out, they are called ecclesia. And that is the church. We are called out of the world. Even though we are still living in the world, we don't belong to the world. We belong to the kingdom of Christ. And because of that, we have, a, we have the authority of Christ. And before he left, he gave us authority to cast out devils, to resist the devil. So if you are a child of God and you don't submit to the authority of Christ, you can never ever resist the devil. You have to be in Christ first. Don't be deceived by those who teach you how to pray, but they don't teach you how to live a holy life. Be ye holy in all manner of conversation. For it is written, Be holy, for I am I, your Lord, your God, for I am holy. If you feel you can wake up in the midnight and start screaming and shouting without having any relationship with God, you are deceiving yourself. As a matter of fact, a lot of people no longer know the meaning of being born again. Someone contacted me recently and told me, Oh, man of God, nothing is working in my life. Everything is, my life is on reverse. Everything is, is crumbling before me. And I asked him, are you born again? He said, yes. My mind said, ask him if he has a girlfriend. So I asked him, do you have a girlfriend? He said, yes. Do you sleep with her? I mean, do you have sex with her? He said, yes. And I was kind of, what? And you say you were born again? And I told him, who told you you were born again? As a matter of fact, I don't know what people understand by being born again. This generation. I don't know what they believe in. How can you believe in a doll? In fornication? In perpetual sin? And you are saying you are Christ-like. Being born again means Christ-like. This shouldn't be. I don't know the kind of mentality that a lot of people have today. So I told him, if you are really born again, if a woman strips naked for you, you will fly through the window. Because you wouldn't afford to destroy the temple of God. You are the temple of God. The Spirit of God lives in you. And you will never afford to destroy that house of God. There are lots of people who have destroyed the temple of God. And they are wandering up and down this world. Being pursued by one trouble or the other. Because the Spirit of God had left them. Don't behave foolishly. Be wise. Brethren. Let us be wise. A lot of Christians are living in rebellion. Complete rebellion. If you are a child of God, before you must resist the devil, you must expose the works of darkness and not be a part of them. Ephesians 5, 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Expose them. Let me put it on the screen again. Have no fellowship with prostitutes. Have no fellowship with scammers. Have no fellowship with darkness. Don't fly in the night. Have no fellowship with witchcraft spirits. Have no fellowship with mammoth spirits. Have no fellowship with shams. Have no fellowship with those you know are not of God. But claim to be the children of light. Have no fellowship 
with demonic spirits. Don't consult the dead. Have no fellowship with them. Don't live in sin. Sin as a works of the sin as a work of the flesh. Have no fellowship with the works of the flesh and with the works of darkness. Instead of that, expose them, reprove them. If you are in the light, everything that is in the light exposes darkness. Because light in its own nature exposes darkness. For the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So wherever we are, we are to shine the light of Christ. We don't need to live the life of hypocrisy. Those who proclaim light in the day and the and, and they promote the work of darkness in the night. No, we don't need to live like that. How many of you, brethren, have submitted to the authority of Christ? I want us to read that passage again. The James we read. James 4, 7-9. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He must flee. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be mindful even if you have faith. Even if, sorry, even if you have submitted to God. If you have a double mind, you cannot resist the devil. Because you will be like the wind. You will be tossed up and down. You must believe in your heart. If you do not believe, you will be tossed up and down. You will not be able to cast out the devils. You will not be able to resist the devil. You must believe. The Bible says in the same James chapter 1 verse 8. Say so that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that is the truth. He is unstable in all his ways. You must believe. If you want to resist the devil and you are not in Christ, this is a word for you. Look at the scripture. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands. Before you resist, cleanse your hands. Repent of your sins. Purify your hearts. If you have doubts, remove the doubts. Afflict yourself with fasting and mourn and weep for your sins. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Weep for yourself because you have lost it. And ask God to forgive you your sins. So that you can be restored to your maker. Before I pray, I want to ask you, are you a believer? Are you a true soldier of Jesus Christ? Or you are like the seven sons of Sceva? Who said, by the Jesus, Paul preached. I command you, come out. Are you like the seven sons of Sceva in the church? Are you among those, after praying, they oppress you the more? Are you among those groups of Christians? Do you need a change in your life? Have you totally submitted to Christ? Is there any part of your heart that Jesus Christ have no access? There are many people who say they are Christians, but there are places in their hearts that Jesus Christ cannot access. It could be that secret thing you do in secret. It could be that spirit that you know lives inside of you that you don't want anybody to know. You're comfortable with that spirit. This is a problem. I will continue to say it every time. Most Christians, I mean majority of Christians, are harboring demons in themselves. I did not care. I have confronted a lot of them. Even last week, I spoke to one of them. She was 15 years old when I was begging her to repent. She was born year 2000. She is 23 now. Eight years later, I asked her, have you repented? She said, oh, I've given my life to Christ. I said, 
who conducted deliverance for you because when I confronted you you refuse to repent she said oh I pray to God even the sister was sick an orphan I told her I'm going to pay your school fees I'm going to take you as my own daughter I'm going to send you to I will train you to the university level on one condition give up this spirit whenever she is sick they called me I sent her money there was a time I sent her to the hospital last year I sold clothes for her but she doesn't call me it is a sister who is also possessed that calls me and I said this your sister cannot call me because she doesn't like the condition I gave to her. I said, let this spirit go. There was a time I told her, for you to know that God can cast away evil spirits. She was afraid. She said, oh, I, I, I don't want to let the spirit go. First of all, she said, this is my only friend. Anywhere I go, she goes there with me. And then another time she said, oh, if I, if I did renounce this spirit, they will kill me. And then I told her, I'm telling you, for three days you are not going to see the spirit. So that you will know that the power of God can cast out devils. And for months, she hasn't contacted me. I told this sister last week. I said, she is sick. You are asking me to send money for treatment. Why can't she call me? And I asked her, how many times have I told you that I took her as my daughter, but she doesn't take me as a father. I asked her, how many times have I called you? How many times have I complained to you? She said, many times. And I said, okay. So how do you expect me to help someone who does not want to come out of the kingdom of God, including this one as if I asked her? When you were 15 years old, you made a confession to me that they want me to sleep with you. And the, the child was already in your womb. So what is my safety now if I allow you to come close to me? You said you have been delivered. Listen, this is someone who takes holy communion. She says she is born again and you have thousands of them, millions of them like this in the church. They are very comfortable. They have no problem flying to the covenant, going to the water kingdom. Yet when they say bind Satan, pray that Satan should die, they will be the one to scream the most. Do not be deceived for God is not mocked, but so a man sows, that shall he also reap. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For because of these very things, the wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. Submit to God before you can resist the devil. You can be a part of that kingdom. A lot of people contact me, men of God pray, men of God pray. Sometimes after praying for a while, God will leave me to pray and intercede and pray sometimes fast. And then God will open my eyes and say, look at this, my child. I can't answer the prayer because she or he belongs to the kingdom of darkness. So why do you feel that because witches are, are pursuing you, you want to be free from them? But you are a part of another covenant. Do you think God is stupid? If you belong to the kingdom of light, then be in the kingdom of light. If you belong, want to belong to the kingdom of darkness, remain there. Don't come here. Stop deceiving yourself. There are too many people with demons in the church and they don't care about anything. But God cares. He wants you to repent. Repent of your sins. Before you can resist the devil. As a matter of fact, there are times some people contact me for prayers and God will say, Shh, don't mention anything to me about this person. This is not my child. 
And you see them crying in church and weeping, asking God to deliver them from the powers of darkness that are oppressing them. But they will never cry like that and ask God to set them free from that kingdom of darkness. You are afraid to die. You will die. You must die. You, you don't want to die. You are keeping quiet. You are a part of the kingdom of darkness on earth. And you come before a man of God and don't want to open up. But you don't, some, as a matter of fact, some people that are being afflicted today is because the things they projected to innocent people backfired against them. And they will go to prayers. <laughs> God is not mocked. You can't mock God at all. Let us pray. I never intended to preach for this long. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Savior, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Lord, cure our ignorance. Cure our ignorance by the power of your word. Cure every ignorance in our heart. Help us to love you. Help us to follow you. Help us to know the truth so that the truth that we know can set us free. In the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke every power of darkness. We rebuke the devil. We rebuke every power that steals the truth from us. Every power of darkness that covers the heart of your people. We rebuke them today in the name of Jesus Christ. May the power of the Lord set us free. May the glory of God be revealed in our lives in the name of Jesus. I pray for those who are afflicted by the devil. Today in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you out of that life. You spirit of infirmity you spirit of poverty you power of sin i rebuke you in the name of jesus come out and never go in again i break every shame every curse every hex upon your life i break it right now be free from the powers of darkness i rebuke every devourer in your life every leaking pocket i rebuke you right now in the name of jesus be free be delivered. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. Lord, I pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry in one way or the other. May the Lord God Almighty open the windows of heaven upon your life. Receive the blessings of the Lord. Those who are sick, those who are afflicted, receive your healing. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of today's message. Uh, please share this video with someone. And those of you who have been supporting us, we want to sincerely appreciate you for giving and for sustaining our ministry and our charity organization. May the Lord God Almighty bless you real good in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you want to contact me, my details are on the screen. Let me put the contact details on the screen. So that you can use them to contact me. Um, my website, personal website, is hosannadevi.com, uh, and my social media handle is at hosannaeedevi. These are my contact details. You can contact me, and uh, I'll be very glad to attend to you. But please, before you contact me, make up your mind before you contact me. If you know. There are things you cannot share because if they are problematic and you don't want to share them, then there is no need. Um, be faithful to God. Be truthful. If you need deliverance, you need God to intervene. Be open. Uh, nobody will play with your secrets. That's what I'm saying. Don't beat about the bush, beat about the bush, beat about the bush. Be open. Let the Spirit of God lead you. Whether you want to die now or not, the truth is that one day you will die. So forget about the threats from the, king, from the kingdoms of darkness. Please, before you go, subscribe to this channel, Hosanna E. E. David. Use the details on the screen to contact me. And the Lord God Almighty will use me to attend to you if you have any need. May the Lord God Almighty bless you and continue to uplift you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Bye-bye.